this guy looks like it could be close to 10 inches. Eight, nine, 10. It's gonna be close. We're working our way towards dinner. I think he might be a keeper. Let me go ahead and crack one open. Welcome to today's Gale Force Twins episode. I'm really excited for today because if you guys have been following along whatsoever on any of our social media platforms, you will know we have been traveling like crazy. I feel like we're chickens with our heads cut off. We have not had a chance to breathe and be in our home waters, and that's where we are today. We're in our home waters of the Florida Keys, and we're gonna do some inshore fishing. Now, the goal today is to create for you guys a catch, clean, cook inshore meat fish. So whether that's trout, mangrove snapper, something of those probably yellow jacks yellow jacks yes yellow jack mm, tasty amanda so whatever we catch inshore is what we're gonna cook edible, we're gonna cook if it's edible my name is emily and man's behind the camera welcome to our channel gale force twins Video is brought to you by Finor Sunglasses. Come on. on, fish on. We got one on. I saw a school. I think it's a mangrove. It's, a it's definitely a mangrove snapper. All right, there's a whole school of them here, Amanda. The skunk is off the boat. The skunk is off the boat. We have our mangrove snapper. AKA gray snapper, also known as gray snapper because they have a grayish color. They're also called mangrove snapper because they live around mangrove islands. We personally like to call them mangies. Mango yep, snapper. mangies is their Some nickname. Some people even call them mangoes. Mangoes. That one's just the slang. Mangrove snapper mangrove make snapper. for delicious mangrove salsa. Yes, so he's not um, big enough to mango, keep. I just missed that up. I said mango salsa. Mango salsa. Mango salsa with mangrove snapper. That sounds, sounds delicious. Really good. All right. There he goes. That a little, little guy. Small. Not big enough to keep. In order to keep a mangrove snapper out here, he would have to be 10 inches and be five per person. But make sure you guys are always checking your regulations because out in the Atlantic side of the, basically on the ocean side, it's 12 inches, 10 per person. So make sure you guys are checking. Um, I started to reel it in and got bit. So I haven't seen it yet. Still near the mangrove, so it could just be another mangrove snapper. Yep, he's bigger though. This guy looks like he could be close to 10 inches. It's probably more like eight or nine, but We'll check him out. Next mangrove snapper. He is bigger than the last one. And check this one out. You guys see, can you see those, that kind of I like, almost see like that. scars? Here, here, Definitely. There. Looks like he ha has some battle wounds or something like that. Yeah, that it does. Crazy? Okay, so this one's definitely not 10 inches, not a keeper, but for reference, let's give him a measure on the marine He's map. pretty close. In hindsight, Amanda, I think he might be a keeper. I believe So when we measuring do. snappers, we'll start with the front of his mouth at zero and you do pinch the tail so we have eight nine ten this is a keeper mangrove snapper i'm thinking we should do catch clean cook mangrove snapper with mango, mango salsa. salsa does that not sound delicious that sounds absolutely delicious okay, so let's guys. drip this flat a little more let's catch a few more yes and then let's get to the kitchen let's get him on the cooler emily get him, get him in, in the cooler. cooler but guys just so you know we have the best in our opinion mango salsa recipe. Would you agree, Emily? I would agree, but I have to admit, it's been a while it's since we've uh, made one, made it. a bit of time. So I might have to do some digging into the notes to see what the recipe is, but it is really good. It's got cilantro, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Hopefully, it's another mangrove. And hopefully, he's 10 inches. He feels decently sized, though, I must say. Oh. Let's check it out. Oh! It's gonna be close. No, gonna... that's a keeper. Yeah. That's dinner. We're working our way towards dinner. Another 10 inch mangrove snapper, 10 plus inches. I'll double check him. But look at that. He, he just gulped it. Destroyed. I mean, just gulped. That this is the DOA, DOA shrimp. shrimp. And we will show you the rig. Every fish you've seen be brought in the boat so far has been on this DOA three inch shrimp. This color exactly. Now, I, I don't really have a color preference. Amanda's gonna try doing that like chartreuse yellow one. Yeah, it's, I'm so gonna try. Oh, Amanda's gonna try this one. This one right here okay. in a minute, see if I start catching any. So we'll see. Um, we will see. Which one I, performs better. I have been using, I'll show you. I have been using this red 
um, jig head with absolutely no luck. So it is now um, time to switch it up and switch it to the same rig Emily is fishing with. We're fishing a grassy flat in around five feet of water. So my leader is probably around four feet. So I do wanna be somewhat close to the bottom. So leader length will depend on the depth. And this is also 15 pound. And we went to a Billy Bay click clacker. The reason we picked a grassy flat was for two reasons. One, we were hoping for trout. Two, if there's no trout, there's mangroves. So it's kind of a good place to come if you know you want to maybe and there's, get some. We're right next to a channel. Fish and right, we're next to a channel. We have some islands nearby. So there's a lot of information that kind of goes into picking where you're fishing. And this grassy flat is very large. So we're able to make nice long drifts and not constantly be redoing our drifts. So motor's off, we're just drifting right now. And how, I guess there's a question is, how do you know if your flat is grassy? Now that's where the Finor sunglasses come in. Having a really good pair of polarized sunglasses are gonna help you see the bottom, help you see past the glare, past the depth of the ocean floor to the ocean floor and be able to see what that sea floor looks like. Exactly, so if I'm looking down with just the camera, you can see all that glare and with the glasses, Emily can see straight I can to the bottom and we can Why don't we dunk a see. GoPro? Yes, I'm gonna dunk a GoPro under the water so you can see the grass. And clearly, basically, you can see the grass and that's pretty close to what we can actually see with the glasses, of course, minus the waves that are on top of the water. We're on and we caught another snapper, but this time he looks like he's under. Actually, let's give him a measure. He might, I think he's under, but we'll give him a measure just in case. Moment of truth, moment of truth. Pinching the tail from the zero. Oh yeah, we are a keeper. Wait, 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 hold on. I gotta get that shot better, Amanda. Okay, don't let him go overboard. We so, are basically 12. like 10 and a half inches. So we have another keeper snapper. We are slowly adding to our dinner collection. Mango, mango salsa. Mango salsa with mangrove, mangrove snapper. snapper. We are now at the filet table. We've caught plenty of snapper for dinner. And with the size of these snappers, okay, so first of all, my knife. I definitely, for snappers, like a medium, medium flexible knife. And then for skinning, I like to go even more flexible. Today, I only have this one knife, so I will use it for both. It works well for both. I like to do these guys in one easy swipe, um, and it's super easy, and we get to keep a lot of the meat. So I'll just teach you guys really quick. You're going on an angle. We're gonna cut on an angle, gotta work around the scales. Mangrove snappers have a lot of scales, so it might take a minute. And you go down so you feel that backbone. And once I feel it, I'm gonna turn my knife pretty much almost horizontal to the horizontal table. Horizontal to the table, and then these guys have hard rib cages you might have to push through. But once you get through it, you're just gonna feel that backbone and follow it all the way down. And if you can, stop before the, but you cut through the tail and flip your meat over. Once Personally, you, I like to, to cut it off I'm completely. I like to cut it off completely, but then what we can do from here is we're already attached and we can just skin our nice filet. And as you can see, my left hand is following from behind the knife to hold that skin. And there we have our nice snapper filet. The rib cage is right here. It's kind of like a triangle. It's more like the stomach. Yeah, it's kind of like the stomach. So we're just gonna cut that out. And then we like to feel for pin bones. So I can definitely feel some right in here, but the pin bones will be along this bloodline. Now the pin bones on snappers don't tend to come back here. Some fish will have them through the whole bloodline, but on snappers, you can go ahead and make what we call like a V cut through that bloodline. And that is your perfect snapper filet, ready to go, ready to eat. No bones, no skin. Welcome to our kitchen where we are gonna be cooking mango, mango, mangrove snapper with mango salsa. salsa. You can see we already have the ingredients for our mango salsa ready to go. So we're gonna teach you guys how we make our mango salsa. Then we're going to cook the snapper. And just so you guys know, as always, details in description box for the recipe if you want the specifics. We are gonna go ahead and mix all of our mango salsa ingredients. Now today we have two 
very large mangoes. Sometimes we use three mangoes if they're small. You just want to make sure your mangoes are ripe. And as far as jalapeno goes, today we're using one jalapeno because it's very spicy, but you can choose, choose to use one to two jalapenos depending on how spicy you want your mango salsa to be. Then we're gonna go ahead and throw in the red onion. And we usually do red bell pepper, but our store was out of red bell pepper. So today it's green bell pepper and cilantro. Then of course, some lime juice and salt and pepper to taste. Now we are gonna let all the flavors come together. So I would just throw this in the fridge put it to the side, and we're gonna focus on our fish. I have my mango snapper fillets. Oh, mango snapper? My mangrove, this is a tongue twister. My mango snapper fillets already seasoned very heavily in Cajun seasoning. We just use McCormick Cajun seasoning. It really adds a lot of spice, and we always season it heavily because once we flour egg panko it, some of it will fall off. And then I've got my pan behind me with some oil heating up to go ahead and fry our snapper. Grabbing my first fillet, gonna go straight into that flour. And then we are gonna go into the egg. And this is a secret of ours. And if you've watched our recipe videos before, you will know we don't keep secrets. So it's not really a secret, but we are convinced that the order, flour, egg, panko, makes a huge difference in like the texture of your fish. So there we go. We're just gonna pat that on there. We're gonna do this with all of our fillets. Let me go ahead and put this on the plate right here. We're gonna do all of our fillets and then we're gonna go ahead and fry them. Going into the pan, and this will probably cook with the size of our fillets, one to two minutes a side tops. Does this not look absolutely delicious? Let me go ahead and crack one open. You can see how flaky and perfectly cooked that is. With the thinness of these fillets, we cooked them for one and a half minutes on each side. Perfectly crispy, perfectly delicious. This is probably a top three favorite recipe of ours that we have tweaked over time to perfect. We'll go ahead and put the recipe details in the description box for you. In the meantime, we want you to get out there, have fun, and stay safe.